Okay, dear ladies, let's Bezrat Hashem. Um, good evening, dear ladies. Let's bless that we will all have the good to greet Mashiach Tzidkan and Barachamim Murim Bimra Biamein Amen. Eliyahu Navi Eliyahu Tishvila Gledi Bimra Yavon Moshech David Eliyahu Navi Zachul Atom. And we will all have the good to see the building of Beit Hamikdash Hashem Shivim Bimra Biamein Amen. כיין בין רוב בשבת נצר נתת תקום תרחם ציון כית לחננה כיבה מועד השיבנו אדוני אליך ונשוב החדש ימינו כקדם and may we all have the zechut to go to the land of Israel on the wings of eagle and may we all have part in ארץ ישראל Dear ladies, בשם השם נעשה ונצליח אין עוד מלבדו השם שפתי תפתח ופי הגיתי לתך and everything we're doing is לזכות כל ישראל בעזרת השם and בעזרת השם the lesson is לילוי נשמת ברוך ישראל שלום, בן, בן מיכאל הנולד מעירית, עליו השלום תשמותו צורה בצורה חיים, ולילון נשמת דוד חיים, בן רבקה, עליו השלום תשמותו צורה בצורה חיים. And everybody that needs and all of the souls that don't have anybody to say for them קדיש, may they all be זוכר with us through the whole year, everything that we did together בעזרת השם, may they have זכות. This year, the years to come, Bezrat Hashem, until we go out of this world. So, Besiyat Adishmaya, also for Refua Shlema to Klal Yisrael, Yochevet Yudit Badvora, Dvora Batsherna, Esterut Batsara, Rivka Yael Batsara, Rachel Chaya Batlea Sara, Sara Rachel Bat Chasida Sara, Chaya Yudit Yudit Bat Rachel, Rachel Bat Pesia, Yona Batsara Zohara, Sara Bat Malka, Sara Bat Malka, and Mordechai ben Rivka, and everybody that needs from Aleph to Taf, Bezrat Hashem, everybody that needs, and everybody that is healthy, may Hashem continue their health mentally and physically, and Bezrat Hashem, that we will all be written and subscribed in the Book of Life for a happy, Amen. sweet year with Shalom, with peace, Bezrat Hashem, and physically and spiritually, Bezrat Hashem. So dear ladies, we are in Parashat Kitavo. In Parashat Kitavo, this is Shabbat, it's Parashat Kitavo, and it's not an easy parasha. It starts with the Bikurim that we bring from the fruits of the land of Israel, that the land of Israel is blessed, and we bring it in front of the Kohen, and over there uh, we, we say Mikra Bikurim, Besiyat Adishma, and immediately after that comes all of the, the, uh, all of the curses. This parasha Kitavo has curses and parashat Bechukotai, the ending parasha, the ending portion of Chumash Vayikra, has curses. In this parasha there are, four, there are 98 curses. In parashat Bechukotai there are 49 curses. And it said in Masechet Megillah that as page 31 Amud Bet, Ezra Sofer said, תיקן להם לישראל, that he made for the children of Israel, שיהיו קוראים קללות שבמשנה תורה, that they will read the curses in פרשת כי תבוא, in חומש דברים, which is called משנה תורה, which are 98 קללות, curses, קודם ראש השנה, before ראש השנה, in the essence of, כדי שתכלה שנה וקללותיה, תחל שנה וברכותיה, which means that the year will end with all of its curses, with all of its... Uh, harsh decrees, and the, and the new year, Bezrat Hashem, will be opened with sweetness and Mashiach here, and Bezrat Hashem, all of the blessings. So it says, Hoshe Navi says in chapter 14, verse 3, he says, parim sfatenu, which means, even if there was a harsh decree upon the children of Israel, by reading it and feeling that it's happening to us, then it's like it happened, and Hashem atones for us for all of the, all of the things that we did. But we always need to accept upon ourselves not to repeat and and not to repeat the sins and to better ourselves. So in Parashat Bechukotai, we see that the, exactly half of the curses that are in Parashat Kitavo, this Parashat, this that we're going to read. And, uh, you know, we read it in a low voice, but still we have to read it. And, and just like 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 it's happening to us, and it really, most of it already happened to us in the Holocaust, in the pogromim, in the exiles, in the crusades. Baruch Hashem, the children of Israel, from the moment they're a nation until now, um, we went through a lot of suffering, a lot of harsh decrees. And you know, there's nothing like the children of Israel. Even though we went through harsh decrees, 
I understand why Hashem put us his first bones. Because even though we went through harsh decrees, we were always, always kind to everybody that is around us. We always, uh, we didn't pay with, uh, with, uh, uh, with uh, wickedness to the nations. We always paid with goodness to the nations until today, Baruch Hashem. Because we are the children of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. We are the sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And it's says about the children of Israel, Rachmanim Bnei Rachmanim. That they are merciful, the sons of merciful. So dear ladies, uh, we see that we end the year with all of its curses and we open the year with all of its blessings. So there's always a parasha, a portion that separates between the curses and, and the new year, which is parashat nitzavim that starts, that will be next week, the, the Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah. So, uh, which means uh, this is a Shabbos before Rosh Hashanah. So, dear ladies, let's see. In Parashat Bechukotai, it everything, all of the curses regard the first, the ruining of the first temple, and everything is plural. It it speaks to all of us together, but um, but over here in Parashat Kitavo, it's it speaks as individuals. Everything is singular. It speaks to each and every one of us because the second temple was ruined because of baseless hatred. And baseless hatred starts with each and every one of us. And the fixing, because it's baseless hatred, the fixing is, is unconditional love, that we will love each other. It doesn't matter the level of observance of the Torah that we have or commandments that we have. We should love each other just because we are Jewish people. Once we love each other, there's no, we are all responsible for each other. There's no nation that got this measure from Hashem. We are all responsible for each other. So let's let's speak about it, Bezrat Hashem, and speak about the curses. Why? Because we have, before Rosh Hashanah. And when we go to the Machzor, and the Machzor, before Rosh Hashanah, it's written on the eve of Rosh Hashanah, we go and do Atarat Nedarim and Atarat Klalot, also, all of the curses we take off, off of ourselves. Just opening it. You see, there's Seder Atarat Klalot. So we go in front of a court, a Jewish court, which means either there will be 10 people or three people that are scholars in Torah. And we go in front of them. And, and, the, and even Atarat Klalot, taking off curses, uh, it says that there's a, a minhag, a custom that even from the 19th of the month of, of Av, which is 40 days before Rosh Hashanah, we can go and do it. And we can also do it uh, during the 10 days of atonement. And it's and we ask from Hashem Shimun, Rabotai, Yare, Nachnu Shalim, Ubakshim Hatara, Mina Kadosh Baruchu, Min Toratenu Akdosha, Mibedin Shemala, Ubedin Shemala, Ubedin Shemata, which means we are asking for permission. Uh, from Hashem and from a holy Torah and from the court of heaven and the court in this world and from all of you rabbis that we are speaking in front of them because the, we have to speak in front of them and then they they answer us back in order to take off curses vows everything that we we did so besiata dishmaya we see it over, which means it's serious. But I want to show you, Bezrat Hashem, how do we turn a curse into a blessing? So let's go to the beginning. And we're going to Adam and Eve. We are all called the sons of Adam. So which means all the men are the sons of Adam, Bnei Adam, and all of the women are the daughters of Eve, of Chava. Nachnu kulanu bnot Chava, the... Which means from uh, the, uh, Adam and Eve, all of humanity came. And we know that on the 25th of the month of Elul, uh, which is next week, Wednesday, was the first day of creation. And Hashem said, Vayihi or let there be light. This is the first day of creation. On the sixth day, humanity was created, Adam and Eve, which is Rosh Hashanah. So we are going to Adam and and we see over there 
that Hashem commanded, commanded Adam not to eat from the tree of knowledge. And before he commanded, he showed him and he said, look, Bidrash Rabbah says, look at all the world that I created. Hashem created the whole world. He says, I created it for you. See to it that you won't ruin my world. And he told him not to eat from the tree of knowledge because if he will eat, he will bring death to the world. And we see that they ate from the tree of knowledge and Hashem goes to Adam. He goes because he wants to go into a conversation with him and he doesn't want him to be afraid. But we know, So they heard Hashem in paradise because Hashem put him in paradise, so they heard him walking there. So once they heard him, they were hiding the, themselves. Hashem so Hashem calls him, Hashem, God calls Adam. Where are you? It's not that Hashem, it's not that Hashem did not know where he is, but he wanted to go into conversation with him. I, he says, Adam says, I heard, he says, I heard your voice and I, and I heard you in the garden, the, the garden of Eden, but I was afraid with, from, from you because I am naked and I hid myself. Who told you that you are naked? Did you eat from the tree that I told you not to eat, the tree of knowledge? Now, our sages say that if he had a schut, and if he, had, if he did shuva immediately, if he would have repented immediately, all humanity would still be in paradise and we would live forever and Mashiach is with us. But look what Adam did. And he did this. He says, the woman that you gave me, he natnali meetz vauchal. She gave me from the tree, and I ate. Instead of being grateful for the woman that Hashem created for him, because Hashem said, "Eselo ezer kenegdo," I will make him a helper corresponding to him, because the woman is a mirror image of the husband. So instead of saying, Hashem, thank you for the woman, I, I've sinned that I ate. You told me not to eat. You didn't tell her not to eat. You told me not to eat. So instead of telling him, Chatati aviti pashati, I've sinned, he shows ungratefulness to Hashem. And he does repent eventually, and Hashem forgives him. At Rosh Hashanah, the day that he's created, and Hashem forgives him. But he didn't do it at the beginning, and he didn't say chatati, because King Solomon says, he who conceals his sins will not succeed. But he who confesses over his sins, Hashem is going to forgive him. God forgives him. And why, does, why is it written over here? It's not to make us... I feel uncomfortable or shamed. It's in order that we will know that we need to do the fixing. A fact, Adam and Eve sinned. We are their children. We have to fix what they sinned. What happened because of their sin? Hashem cursed Adam with 10 curses. Eve, Chava, with 10 curses. The serpent with 10 curses. And the earth... Hashem cursed with nine curses, together 39, like 39 melachot, like the 39 uh, works that we are not allowed to do on Shabbat. And if we take 39 lametet and we change the place of the letters, it's tal, tal orot alecha. And eventually this is the do that Hashem will bring over, over us to resurrect all of the, all of the dead. So Besiyat Adishmaya, we see that Hashem wants us to know and we continue. What happened after that? We have the sin of Cain and Hevel. And we see that we have the sin of Cain and Hevel. And when Hashem, Hashem asks again, Cain, where is your brother? We are going to Cain. Just a minute, let me go to it.
Okay. So Hashem speaks to Cain. Eventually Cain does like half a tshuva. And he says, and he tells him, um, after Cain kills his brother, Vayomer Hashem el Cain, Ei Hevel Achicha, where is your brother? Where is Hevel your brother? Vayomer lo, lo yadati, I do not know. You know, we forget that there's an eye that sees, an ear that listens, and all of our actions are written in a book. Hashem knows everything. And Yirmiyahu prophet, in, in, the, in the prophet Yirmiyahu, it says, Can somebody conceal himself and I won't see him, says Hashem? So it says over here, and he tells him, so uh, where is the, uh, Hevel, your brother? And he says, I don't know. Am I the keeper of my brother? What did you do? The blood of your brother, all of the blood of your brother are shouting to me from earth, which means all of the descendants that were supposed to come from him. So we see Aso Hashem also curses Cain. And, and we continue and we go to Noach. And we see that after the flood, because the humanity sinned after the flood, Cain, um, Cain uh, builds a vineyard. And after he builds a vineyard, he drinks wine. Noach, uh, Noach, Noach, um, Noach makes a, a, a plant, plants a vineyard, and after he plants the vineyard, he drinks wine, and he becomes drunk, and he goes into the tent, and he's uncovered. And it says, Vayarcham avi knan et ervat aviv, vayaged eshnei chav bachutz. So knan, so Ham, the father of knan, sees the nakedness of his father, and he goes and he tells his two brothers. And it says that Shem beyefet, because they have three brothers, Ham, Shem beyefet, and the Shem and Yefet take a garment, and they go backwards, and they cover the nakedness of their father without looking at him. Vayikatz Noach, and Noach is waking up, Mieno, Vayeda et asher asalo b'noa katan. And now he knows, and he, he is aware of what uh, his son did to him. And, and the Midrash says that he also um, made him that he cannot bring children anymore. Because he thought that uh, the world is not enough for, for three brothers, and he will bring more children, then the world should be divided by more children. And he's slandered his father by telling his bro uh, both brothers he could have gone and, and covered him and not say anything in order to, to not shame him in front of his brothers. So Noach curses, um, Noach curses Ham. And, he, and you see it's a very, um, very uh, surprising because you see, Noach is cursing Canaan. Canaan is the, the son of Ham. So it's cursing his grandfather. Pay attention that Yaakov Avinu, when Yosef, he calls Yosef in order to bless him, he doesn't bless Yosef. He takes the two sons and he blesses Ephraim and Menashe. Only when he blesses all of the brothers, then he blesses Yosef. But when he calls Yosef, he takes his two sons and he blesses Ephraim and Menashe. Why? Because the blessings of the children is the blessings of the parents. When we have Yiddish Hasidish Shanachat from our children, when we have we are happy with our children and they are healthy and they go in the way of Hashem and they, and they get married and they have children, then we are happy. This is a blessing. But if chas ve shalom, we have worries from our children and problems with our children, then it's, it's like hell in this world. So he's not cursing Ham, he's cursing his grandchild, the son of Ham, which is Canaan. And he curses him, that he says, Cursed is Canaan, a slave of slaves shall be, shall he be to his brothers, which is Shem and Yefet. Shem, from the Shem, the children of Israel come. From Yefet is Greece and, and, and um, Rome and, and all the others come. So we see, and Egypt are the sons of Ham. 
where there's a whole list after that, who, the, who is the son of whom. And we continue, and we see that humanity didn't learn anything yet. We see after the flood and after all of these curses and after Adam is cursed, Cain is cursed, Noah curses Canaan, we, we continue, we see that there's the generation of the tower, Dora Falaga, and they want to build the tower to tell Hashem, you're going to say in heaven, we are, uh, we, we are going to control everything over here, we are, we are under the constellation, leave us chas v'shalom alone. Can you imagine? And again, what does Hashem do? He brings 70 angels and he separates them and some of them he, he turns into monkeys and, 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 and everything we see, this is, and why does Hashem give us all of this uh, description? Because Hashem wants us to know that we are all coming from Adam and Eve. And to explain to us why we have different nations with different languages because everybody spoke the holy language, which is Hebrew. And once Hashem uh, took off, uh, um, took, uh, broke this tower, and only a third of it stayed, and, and he separated them and changed their languages to 70 languages, Hashem wants us to know that we, the root of us is from Adam and Eve. Hashem wants us to know that. But we see curses that come up one after the other. We come to Abraham. Look how beautiful it is. We come to Abraham Avinu. Abraham Abinu is the son of Terach. Terach, sell, not only he preaches to worship other gods, but he also sells, he has a store to sell idolship from wood and from stone. And his son is Abraham. And Hashem already told Noah that he gives the children of Noah seven commandments, which are part of the 630 commandments of the children of Israel. We have 620 commandments, 613 by the Torah, seven commandments by our sages, 620, which are the numerical value of a crown, Keter. And the children of Noah, all the nations, they have seven commandments. And the commandments are the three sins that on them says Hashem, Yeharek Bebaliavo, that you should die and not do them, which is worshiping other gods. And the second, and, and a, having intimate relationship that is forbidden, it's forbidden for the children of Israel and the nations, and murdering. And then there are, more, there are four more, Ever uh, Minachai, which means that they are not allowed, all of us are not allowed to eat uh, an animal uh, alive. We have to cook it uh, or bake it or do any, but we are not allowed to eat it alive. And then we, we have, you are not allowed chas v'shalom to, uh, to curse Hashem. And the third one is gezel, which means stealing. And the nations, the children of Israel, we are not allowed to steal. And the seventh one is uh, putting courts. Hashem wanted that we will have courts of justice and officers that will see that what the court decided, decides, then it, then it goes through to see that it goes through. So these are the seven commandments of Noah, which is part of the 630 commandments of the children of Israel. So we, we continue and we see Abraham Avinu, and one of the commandments is not worshiping other gods. And this is the time of the king of Nimrod. And Nimrod also was the one that, uh, that had this idea to, to build this tower in order to, that this world, we, we will control this world. And Hashem is the king of the world. He created it. He, he, he's before the world and after the world. And in between, Hashem is the king of the world. So we see over here also Nimrod. And we, we look at Avraham Avinu. Bera Mezakeaba. A son gives a merit to his father. Even though Terach now was cursed because he didn't do the will of Hashem. Because once you don't do the will of Hashem, so you're part of the curse. So even though Abraham Avinu was searching and analyzing what's happening in the world, and he came to a conclusion that if there's a capital, there has to be a leader to the capital, which means there's a creator. And even though they tried to burn him three days in Be'ul Kasdim, everything they did to him, he stayed still and he gave a merit to his father. 
And because of this, his father had a tikkun in Iyov. This is a reincarnation of Terach in Iyov, and he had a tikkun, a fixing. He fixed his father. So we come up, up till here, and we see that we have also here 98 curses in Parashat Kitavo. So let's look what Hashem tells us. I'm going to go to Parashat Re'e in Chumash, <coughs> in Chumash Devarim. And it says, Hashem tells us, Look, I'm putting in front of you, and this is true not only for the children of Israel, but for the whole world, all humanity. See, I present in front of you today, which means it's true, it's in the present tense, true for every day that we live. Today, a blessing and a curse. את הברכה אשר תשמעו אל מצוות השם אלוקיכם, אשר אנוכי מצווה אתכם היום. The blessing, if you listen to Hashem your God, to all of the commandments that I am commanding you today, which means all of the 600 commandments that we have for the Jewish people are relevant every day, every day that we live. And all of the seven commandments of Noah, are relevant to the nations every day they live. Vaklala and the curse, im loti shmuel mitzvot Hashem elokechem vesartem in aderech shar nochim etzave etchem hayom, which means if you won't listen to all of the commandments that Hashem your God commanded you and you went out from of the way and you worshipped other gods. So we see it's relevant for always. We see, Mamash, it's relevant for all. So we are going to go and see what, does, what did Hashem want from us? What does Hashem want from us? So it says, the Ramban says, Rabbi Moshe ben Nachman, Allah v'shalom s'chutot ha'ganelenu, regarding chapter 32 in, in Chumash Dvarim, verse 26, it says like this, Why did Hashem create humanity? Hashem bara et ha'adam batachtonim sheyakir et bo'o v'yodeh lishmo. Hashem created us in order that we will know Him and we will thank Him and announce, announce Him in this world, crown Him in this world. That's why Hashem created us. And why? Because the souls before they came to this world were under the throne of Hashem and they had the pleasure of the light of Hashem. And, and this is without working, without deserving it. We didn't work for it. So Hashem said to himself, I will bring them to this world in order to know me. And once they know me and they follow my commandments, then they have a reward. They will come to heaven and I'll put them in paradise and there are levels in paradise. And the more they knew me in this world and the more they, they followed the commandments and the more they studied the Torah and the more they were seeked for the truth, which is the sealing of Hashem, then they will have a higher place in paradise. And they will, I will enjoy them and they will enjoy me. So it's in order that we will know Shakirat Borot will know Hashem and he and will thank thank him. And it says because Hashem doesn't need us. Hashem doesn't need us. He just provides for us even though we don't listen to him. He provides, he gives us everything that we need, unbelievable, even though we don't listen to him. So Hashem doesn't really need us. He does this for us, that we will have the reward. So, Just, he wants us to know, to recognize that it will come into our conscience that Hashem created us and will know Him and will thank Him. And all of the prayers and all of the synagogues and all of the shuls, the worship places, that the, all of the public that's, that prays to Hashem, that davens to Hashem, so they can thank Hashem that created them. And they will spread, spread it all over. They will tell, I, we know you are, you are a father. You created us. We acknowledge it. Can you imagine? This is, this is why we're created. 
So let's continue. Shem says, and if you do tshuva, how can you turn a curse into a blessing, even though there are 98 curses, even though Adam was cursed, and it continued through the generations, because we didn't learn. We go to Tomer Dvorah. We go to Tomer Dvorah, chapter 4, chapter 4 in Tomer Dvorah. It says, He'achir gil adam atzmo bimidat abina. How should a person accustom himself with the attribute of bina, of understanding? This is the, the we have, in the county of the Kabbalah, we have keter, a crown, wisdom, chokhmah, and then understanding. So how can a person be accustomed, accustom himself to the attribute of understanding, of bina, and vehu lashu betshuva, which means to do tshuva. To repent. So I would like to continue because Rabbi Moshe Kordeveo speaks about Kain. It says, Vayarach Hashem et reach anichorach, that Hashem smelled the pleasing aroma of the sacrifices of Noach. After he planted the vineyard and, his, and before he planted it, he, made, he gave sacrifices to Hashem. So Hashem enjoyed the smell of, because it, he is announcing Hashem in this world and he's saying, Thank you for saving us, Hashem. So, after he smelled the aroma of, of uh, Noah's sacrifices, he had pleasure from it. It was pleasing in front of Hashem. And, which means that then, when he gave sacrifices, Noah gave in, in front of Hashem, then it caused the judgment to be sweetened and the wrath to be silenced. And Hashem forgave humanity. So this is like, likewise, is by, by these means of repentance, also a man achieves, achieves his essence. And we continue, and we see that he refers to Cain. Teda, Shari Cain, Rahaya, Uminachashaya. So it says, no that Cain, and this is the proof, that Cain himself was, was from the serpent. It says, and he's, and, uh, when Emarman, Hashem told him, Tetib said, you remember that he brought sacrifice, him and his brother Hevel, both of them brought, brought sacrifices, and Hashem, uh, Hashem was pleased with the sacrifice of Hevel, and Hashem did not refer to Cain's Hevel, because it wasn't with all of his heart. And, and why? Because that attributes of, his, of, 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 of uh, the serpent went also to him, which means a jealousy. He was jealous of Adam, of the beautiful wife that he had. So, and, and this essence to bring death into the world, the serpent wanted to bring, because it was the even a clination that was dressed in the serpent in order to bring death into the world. So these character traits went into Cain. So he was jealous of his brother, and he was jealous that his brother also had two twin sisters, and he had one one sister, and he, and, and that's why. And it says that he even uh, was intimate with uh, with a sis, the twin the twin sister of Hevel. So we see that he got like an inheritance the character attributes of his of of uh, the serpent. So it says, um, Hashem tells him, Hello, im tetiv set. So he said, uh, If you better yourself, you will be uplifted. You, you'll do, you will repent and you'll be uplifted. And he continues and it says, Do not think that because you steam from the evil side, there is no chance for you to, to um, rectify yourself. But he says, You can. This is false. For if you better yourself, and you implant yourself in repentance, which means in the essence of tshuva, you'll be uplifted. Hashem will forgive you. So there's no curse that we cannot uplift and, and make and, and turn the curse into a blessing. And how do we know that? Also, the Arizal says in chapter 100 in Tehillim, it says over there, dear ladies, it says over there, Vayohav klala v'tavo'ehu v'lo chafetz bivracha v'tichak mimenu. In chapter 109, verse 17 in Tehillim, it says, He loved the curse, so it has come upon him. He desired, he, he desired not blessings, which means he didn't want blessings. So 
Arizal says that the klala, the curse, can become a blessing. And how can a curse become a blessing? So if we read the word curse in Hebrew from, it, it, from the beginning to the end, it's kuf, lamed, lamed, he, klala. But if we read it, the Arizal says from the end to the beginning, it's he, the, the last letter is he, and then we have lamed, and then we have lamed, which is halel, praise, and kuf, kuf in numerical value, gematria is a hundred, which means when we praise Hashem and say blessings, a hundred blessings a day, we turn the curse into a blessing. So like Rabbi Moshe Kordavir says over here, Shutot Aganalenu, it says that Hashem tells Cain, even though you come from a cursed place, you can better yourself and fix your father. You can fix Adam by repenting. But Cain didn't want to repent. By repenting. And he says, it says over here, So you will root yourself in the secret, in the essence of repenting. Set, which is the word set. Which means you will be part of the goodness that is rooted in it. Because in, in the darkness, there's more light than in the light itself. So it says, Which means that, um, that every bitterness, a uh, heavenly bitterness, his root is sweet. And a, a person, when he does tshuva, he can, uh, he can take away all of the bitterness and cling into the root of sweetness, which means do all of the fixing. So it says in Masechet Yoma, page 86, Samud Bet, Reish Lakish says that Zdonot Nesot Shgagot and Zdonot Nesot Schuyot, which means that uh, sins can become uh, like a, a, like actions that we did without a purpose, but sins also can become merit. So the Midrash says, how can it be the sins can become actions that were without, uh, with, without purpose, or it can become a merit, either this or this, but this is, both of them are true. When we repent out of the fear of Hashem, out of the fear that we know the punishment that we're going to have, which means because of the destructive angels that we created. So if we do that out of fear, then all of the, all of the sins and the, uh, and that cause uh, the creation of the destructive angels will become like the angels cannot touch us. They are there, but they cannot touch us because we, we repented out of fear. So it's like we, di we didn't mean to do, uh, to do the sin, but after we we do the tshuva because it has to be everything has to be out of the fear because first it starts with fear we understand what's going on in the world and that we are judged over everything so and the second thing is that then we have the fear of honoring Hashem Yiratoromemut of the honor of Hashem and from this we come to love of Hashem why because the more we know Hashem we love we love him more the more we come closer to Hashem we feel him more. We see every, all his miracles that he does from us for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We can see it. He's speaking to us through other people, through things that happens to us. And we can smile and say, thank you, Hashem. We ask Hashem to give us a, um, a parking. And then you see that Hashem sees that we'll have a parking. We ask Hashem to help us with this and do this. And you see that he's helping us. So we always say thank you because the more we come closer to Hashem, the more we know Hashem, then we come to love. So when we repent with love, all of the destructive angels become good advocates for us. They go from the left side to the right side and they become good angels to, go, to be good advocates for us in front of Hashem. Can you imagine? So even if Cain came from a cursed place, Hashem tells him, Haloim Tetif Set, if you repent, he says, you can fix everything. If you do tshuva. So it says, Besiyat Adishma, Bemidrash Raba, Parashat Re'e, it says, Perek Dalet, Dalet, it says, it says, Ki im shamor tishmerun. 
if you will keep this mitzvah, which means all of the mitzvot, this mitzvah it refers to Shema Yisrael, that concludes all of the mitzvot, that we say it twice a day. But I wanted to go further in, the, in that paragraph, because it says, it says like this, Hanefesh v'atorah bener, which means the soul and the Torah, uh, a, a, a resembled to a candle. It says in Mishlei chapter 20, verse 27, Ne'a Hashem nishmat adam. The candle of Hashem is the soul of human being. And the Torah, it says in Mishlei chapter 6, verse 23, Ki ner mitzvah v'torah o. Which means the candle, the, the mitzvah is a candle, and the Torah is the light of the candle. Can you imagine? So look how beautiful this is. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu LaAdam. So Hashem told Adam. Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu LaAdam Azeh. He says, Neri Beatcha, my candle is in your hands, Venercha Beadi, and your candle is in my hand, is in my hands. Neri Beatcha, your, my candle is in your hands, is my Torah, because the light of the candle is the Torah. We just say it's from Mishlei, from King Solomon. Venercha biadi, and your light is in my hand, is the soul, the nefesh. Im shamarta et neri, if you will protect and keep, a safe keeping my candle, ani meshamer et nercha. I will keep your candle, your soul in your body. And Hashem gives us a lot of chances to do, to repent, to do tshuva. Look how beautiful. It's very touching. And if you extinguished my candle by not studying the Torah and not following the commandments, I will extinguish your candle, which is your soul. I will take your soul back to me. Can you imagine? So keep yourself and, 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 and guard yourself, your soul. Do it, which means do exactly, do what Hashem wants you to do. So like we said in the beginning, what does Hashem want? Even if we are cursed, and we all come from Adam, we are all the sons of Adam. Us, and then you see Cain, and then you see Noach that cursed Knan. We are all a part of it. And we have the curses of the children of Israel. We go to Abraham, Abraham Avinu, Brit Ben Abeitarim. We see that he makes a treaty with Hashem and he, and he makes a, 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 a covenant between the parts. You remember, he takes the birds and he cuts them to pieces in two lines. This is how they used to do a covenant. And Hashem t brings a fire and eats everything and he tells him, your sons and daughters are going to be slaved for 400 years. This is a fact. And what do the children of Ham, which are Egypt, what do they do? They say, Pharaoh says, let's be wiser than them. We know that, uh, that Noah was righteous and he cursed Canaan. Which, and we are his children. And we know that we are supposed to be slaves to them. Let's slave them. And why were we slaves? in order to do the fixing because we are the first borns of Hashem and the first born has all of the responsibility of all of the other children and the responsibility of the father and mother because it says in Shulchan Aruch in the commandments of respecting thy parents that the first born is considered like the father and mother so we came to fix this sin. If Hashem wouldn't give it, He wouldn't write it in the Torah, and we wouldn't know, we wouldn't know why we came, what, what, what's happening over here. Hashem wrote it as a fact. And it's not personal. It's not something that we will get offended of. It's Hashem wants us to do the fixing. So if we are wise and humble, because for this only, we can't do the fixing without humbleness. We go to Parashat, eh, Parashat Azriah, 
chapter 13, verse 2. It says, Adam ki ye beor psaro. It speaks about leprosy. If a, 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 Adam, a, a man, will have in his flesh, in his skin, set o sapachat o baheret. It's kinds of leprosy. But our sages say, what is set? We just said, Elohim tetif set. Set, dear ladies, is also pride, arrogance. When we think whether we, are, we can teach others, we are better than others. We, are, we, have, we, we have vanity. So leprosy, and today there's barely leprosy. The leprosy that is today because Hashem concealed himself is all around us. But he's concealed. So because today is concealed, the leprosy is on the soul. We cannot kid ourselves. There is leprosy, but it's in, on the soul. And when do we know it? When we go out of this world. Lo alenu. Nobody should, God forbid, that we should not know something like this. O sapachat. What is sapachat? Sapachat is a person that A person that his company are, are people that are not good. They don't go in the way of God. They don't do the will of God. That they, 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 they don't have good attributes. This of a person should pay attention because you know who the person is by his friends. And then Baheret, Baheret means, again, it's another kind of leprosy, but Baheret means that every, there's a person that has, this is arrogance and everything, he understands everything, he knows everything, nobody can teach him anything. Even if you want to advise him something, to help him, you can't say anything, gets angry with you. Don't teach me. I know. We are like children. A wise person, you know, the more we learn. I studied chemistry in the university and I, I wrote a PhD in chemistry. And the more that I studied, I knew how much I'm small in this world. The more we study, we know how are little in this world and Hashem is so big unbelievable the more you study and every day we study and if we don't study oy va voy to us wow to us and our soul if we think that we are that smart we study all the time from everything that happens around us if we have the schut, if we have the merit from, from Hashem, from God to study, all our life is a big a big classroom and all of our challenges is like we're sitting in the classroom and we get tests. Either we pass the test or won't, don't pass the test. It depends on our attitude. If we are arrogant, we have friends that help us to continue being arrogant because, you know, um, there's a story about Admor uh, Miruzin that once he came to a, 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 a city and, the, and there was a very rich person uh, and he was um, a very observant uh, 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 an Orthodox Jew and, he, and everybody and, and there was another one that didn't keep the Torah, that didn't keep the commandments but he was very humble and he had a place also so they told him and he, saw, and he had an inn and the rich person had a beautiful home and when he came to the city uh, the Gabbai told him Rabbi, where do you want to go and sleep? and he decided that he's going to sleep in the inn where the Jewish person was without, that they didn't uh, uh, follow the commandments, didn't keep the commandments, he wasn't observant. And the Hasidim, his Hasidim, uh, were astonished. They said, Rabbi, how come? You have over here, he has, uh, he's righteous, everything is kosher, everything. This also, this in everything was kosher, but he didn't follow the commandments. So he says, uh, how don't you, how, why don't you go to the, a observant man to the to the to the to the person that was keeping the Torah he said because this person has arrogance and this person is humble and the Torah says like this it says in Parashat Acharei Mot, chapter 16, verse 16, that Hashem, why? Hashem is with us even when we sin. Why? Because the soul is from Hashem. It's from heaven. It's from Hashem. So He's with us with everything that we do. We use the livelihood of Hashem either to do His will or not to do His will. 
how much we can be ungrateful. So he says, even if a person doesn't do the will of Hashem, still Hashem is with him. But when a person has arrogance, it says, Besota, in the Gemara in Sota, Daf Dalit, page 4, Kol adam sheyesh bo kasut ruach, any man that has arrogance, a man or a woman, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ein ani vehu yecholin ladu ba'olam. We cannot live together. And we go to chapter 101 in Tehillim, verse 5. It says, I won't be, I can't, uh, uh, an arrogant person with, uh, that has a vanity and thinks that, uh, that he's, um, the, uh, who he is in this world. He says, Hashem, I can't live with him. So he says, I can't go to a place when Hashem is not there, even though he follows the commandment. But over there, even in, his, in their sins, I am there. So when does a person do tshuva? In order to do tshuva, to repent and to make the curses a blessing. In order to do that, we have to have humbleness. We can't, have a, we can't do that without humbleness. And we just uh, fool ourselves. Only when we have humbleness, we take our head down in front of Hashem and we say, Hashem, read Igeret Aramban, how to be humble. So only when we are humble, when we can do tshuva. And by being humble and doing tshuva, we turn the curse into blessings. Because Hashem said, I brought in front of you a blessing and a curse. So look how beautiful it is. In Parashat Kitavo, we know that there are 98 curses. So it, the, uh, our sages counted all of the words that, of the curses inside Parashat Kitavo. And there are 676 curses, words inside the, par, the, portion, the paragraph of curses. And this is exactly in numerical value, Ra'ot. Ra'ot is uh, wicked. And it says that also the name of mercy of Hashem in these paragraphs, in the name of mercy, which is Yudke Vavke, which is 26 in numerical value, appears over there 26 times. So 26 times that, the, that it appears, that the, the name of Hashem appears there, multiplied by the numerical value of the name of Hashem of mercy, of chesed, which is 26, 26 multiplied by 26 is exactly ra'ot, wicked. So we go to um, Tehillim chapter 34, verse 20. It's written, Rabot ra'ot tzadik umekulam yatsilenu Hashem. That a lot of, uh, of um, decrees that are not good come to the righteous, but umekulam yatsilenu Hashem. From all of them, the name of mercy of Hashem saves them. How? by repenting, by doing the will of Hashem. Halo im tetiv set. That if you better yourself, you'll be uplifted. Hashem will make all the curses a blessing. Just like Hashem we did with Avraham Avinu. And because of Avraham Avinu, his father, Terach, had the schut, the merit, to do tshuva when he was reconnated as Eov. So even though all humanity had, has ten curses, that it, with your sweat you're going to eat bread, bread of Torah and bread of Parnas of income. And the woman has curses. That you're going with, with the sorrow, you're going to, to be pregnant and give birth to children. It's the curse from the beginning. So it's not something personal against anyone. Hashem wrote it in order that we will fix it. And chas v'shalom, if we take it personally, <laughs> so we don't get the essence of what Hashem wanted. So besiyat adishmaya, we need to remember that we are, we are in the month of Elul, before Shoshana, the big judgment day, where three books are going to be opened, the book of life, the book of death, and the book of intermediate. And what does Hashem want from us? Tshuva, that we will repent. 
So I would like to bless all of us that we will have the schut to do tshuva and that we will have the schut to be humble and, and to find the merit of each other and help each other to do tshuva, us and the nations, the children of Israel and the nations, because the whole purpose of the world, of Hashem, what He wants from the world, that the whole world will do tshuva. Hashem loves us. He just wants us to do His will. And once we do His will, we are free of the evil inclination. We have freedom. So Bezrat Hashem, I would, like, I would like to bless all of us that we will all have the, the schut, the merit, to greet Mashiach Tzitkana Barachamim Wim Bim Rabbi Amen O Amen. And Bezrat Hashem, that we will all have the schut to see and hear Eliyahu Navi Zechur Latov. And Bezrat Hashem, to see the building of Beit HaMidash Hashishi Bim Rabbi Amen O Amen. Leolam Yipared Adam Mechavor Bidvar Alacha Yachid Verabim Alacha Kerabim. And Bezrat Hashem, כתיבה וחתימה טובה לשדם טובה ומתוקה בגשמיות וברוחניות that will all be written and sealed in the book of life for a happy and sweet year בעזרת השם a year with peace, a year of Mashiach בעזרת השם and in physically and, and spiritually בעזרת השם may we all love each other <coughs> and, Amen, and, and, Amen Thank you Rabbanit Hashem bless you Rabbanit Hashem